If you read Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1, your Bible says that in the year that King Buziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The year King Uzziah died, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, eyes were opened, and he saw the Lord sitting upon the train. His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twin, they covered one, they covered their face. With two wings, they covered their feet. And the remaining two wings, they did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moves. At the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and he said, Lo, this I touch thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away from thee, and thy sins purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. Amen. 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 This story we just read is the story concerning prophet Isaiah. He has been serving God as a prophet for a long time, but he did not have an encounter with God. He did not have a revelation of God. He had not seen God. He did not know God. Perhaps he only knew God by the experiences and the encounters of his fathers, fellow prophets. But personally, he had no encounter with God. There was a barrier between him and God. There was a cage between him and God. There was somebody who was going up to light the incense in the altar instead of him as a prophet. Somebody was taking his place and doing the work of a prophet while he didn't have the chance. And that person was King Uzziah. And that's why the Bible recorded that in chapter 6 of his ministerial calling of his life, Isaiah had an encounter with God. He saw the Lord. Imagine him seeing the Lord in chapter 6, when all of the other prophets like Jeremiah, Zechariah, Ezekiel, Hosea, they had seen the Lord from the beginning. Read the account of Jeremiah. From chapter 1, Jeremiah had seen the Lord. And God himself had asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Same for Hosea, same for Ezekiel, same for Zechariah, and all other prophets. But he did not see God in chapter 1. Isaiah did not see God in chapter 2. He did not see God in chapter 3. There was a blockade and an hindrance in chapter 4. Even in chapter 5, the picture and the revelation of God was far from him. How can you serve and praise somebody that you don't have an encounter with? That you don't have a revelation with? If somebody doubts your God, what would you say? How would you say it? And how would you defend your God? That was the dilemma of Prophet Isaiah. But the moment King Uzziah died, the sixth chapter of Isaiah recorded that he saw God's glory. Child of God, I pray for you tonight. Whatever has been injuring you from seeing the glory of God, whether ministerially, whether financially, whether academically, whether maritally, whatever area that the enemy has been blocking your view, blocking your encounter from seeing the face of God and the glory of God, 
Hear me, child of God. It comes to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord who killed Uzziah and made sure that Isaiah's eyes were open, he will not spare your enemies tonight. Amen. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hear me. Isaiah did not only see the glory of God. He did not only see the glory of God, some other things happened to him. Because of this one intervention, because of the subduing of his enemy, because of the death of the delay, because of the death of the obstacle, because of the death of the hindrance, Isaiah had an intervention divinely from above. And that very moment, the strong man of his life was taken away. He began, his eyes were open, and he began to have an encounter with God. Amen. I don't know the strong man from your father's house. I don't know the strong man from your mother's house. I do not know the strong man from your husband's house or your wife's house, or the strong man from the community where you live that has been stopping you from seeing God's glory. Tonight I make a decree. Death comes upon them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every strong man that is saying, I will not give way. Every strong man that is saying, I will not let you go. Every strong man that is saying that God is a liar in your life. Hear me tonight. I ask that the host of heaven will pack them up, shame them down, cast them out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bible says when you want to enter the house of a strong man, you will first bind his hands and feet. Father, we begin to bind the hands of strong man. We bind the feet of strong man. Strong man stopping us from experiencing your glory. Strong man stopping us from entering into our rest. Strong man stopping us from entering into our next level. Father, we decree that they are bound Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We decree that they are bound Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for divinely intervening in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. Whenever your King Uzziah dies, your heavens will be open. Amen. Whenever your King Uzziah dies, your heavens will be open. Amen. In that particular year, Isaiah testified that he finally saw the glory of God. A lot of you may have been serving God for many years, and you have not seen, you don't even have the experience, the encounter, and you don't have testimonies. You are only always rejoicing over other people's testimony, but nobody has come to rejoice with you because of this strong man that has been standing as an hindrance. Today, I decree that after tonight, you will begin to share your testimony. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will see the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now listen to me. In the case of Prophet Isaiah, after King Uzziah died, certain things happened. Certain things begin to happen. For him, three major things happen. And I pray that you will experience much more than three major things. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will experience multiple blessings. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The first one was in verse 1 to 4. The Bible told us that he saw the much awaited glory of God. He saw angels, he saw their wings, he saw them in their glory, he saw how they covered their legs, their, their face, and then they flew with two. When you see an angel covering his face with his wings, and then he's still flying, you will wonder, okay, as he's flying, what eyes is he using to see since he has covered it? That, that act of the angel represents the fact that no power can hinder you. That's what they were telling uh, uh, Prophet Isaiah. They covered their wings with two, 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 uh, two, two wings. They covered their legs with two wings. Yet, they could move. Child of God, as a human being, if somebody ties your leg and they tie your eye, would you be able to move? You will not be able to move. But what they were showing Isaiah in the realm of the spirit is that when you encounter the glory of God, no man 
can hinder you. No chain can keep you down. You will be able to soar like an eagle and you will be able to get to your next level. Because I have read this scripture several times, but I did not get to this rema that I noticed that the angels covered their, 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 their face, their eyes with wings. And I was asking God, what was the significance? Why would they cover their face and yet they could fly? They were not in that. That was another realm, another realm, another level with God. Father, every hindrance, every power stopping me and everyone under the sound of my voice from getting to the realm of glory. Lord, I thank you because I know it's been taken away. Amen. If the angels were not in that, in spite of the fact that their legs were covered, their eyes were covered, and they were still flying, in the array and the glory of God. Lord, I am very certain that I would no longer be in that. Amen. Whatever I desire that is in line with your will for my life, I begin to enter into it. Amen. I enter into my rest. Amen. I decree you enter into your rest. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kalebro Sokoto Ibalagadu. Shenegen Deri Baba Sutayanaba. Child of God, you and I will see the much awaited glory of God. You will see the much awaited glory of God. Amen. No power will hinder you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The holiness of God will appear to you. Amen. The host of heaven will open unto you. Amen. And listen to me, there was something else that happened. If you look at it, still reading from that verse 1 to 4, it says, and the post of the door moved. The post of the door moved. Akali gradu. Why did the post of the door move? It means that the door has been shut. Child of God, are you listening to this? All along, the door has been shut. Otherwise, if the door has not been shut, why will it move? Just by seeing, experiencing the glory of God, just by the death of the strong man, the post of the door moves. I pray for you. I pray for myself. I pray for everyone who believes in this word of God today. Every door that has been locked to your breakthrough, every door that has been locked to your glory, every door that has hindered you, every door that has stopped you from getting to your next level, every door that does not want you to move forward, I command the post of that door to move now. Amen. I command the post of that door to shift now. Amen. I command the post of that door to move now. Amen. Receive access in the name of Jesus.